untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard game to video. Today we're taking a look at a Mardu colored angels deck featuring four copies of Archangel of Wrath as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. A 4 mana 3-4 angel with flying and lifelink that can also be kicked for either black and or red mana, in which case if it was kicked when it enters a battlefield it deals 2 damage to any target, and if it was kicked twice it can deal 2 more damage to any target, so we can potentially split up 4 damage if we cast it for 6 mana total and because we're dealing damage with a lifelinking creature, we're also gaining that much life, so it can be a huge swing when facing aggro decks. So Archangel is the main payoff for playing all these different colors, and then we also get access to some of the best cards in standard. In red we have Fable of the Mirror Breaker, which eventually turns into Reflection of Kiki Jiki, which also has great synergy with some of our angels like Inspiring Overseer, which can gain one life and draw a card when it enters a battlefield on a 3 mana to 1 flyer, and then a Sanctuary Warden, a 5-5 five five flyer that enters a battlefield with two shield counters on it, and when it enters a battlefield or attacks, we can remove a counter from a creature or planeswalker we control, can be a shield counter, can also be a plus one counter, and then if we do we get to draw a card and create a 1-1 one, one green and white citizen creature token, so if we can copy Sanctuary Warden with our Reflection of Kiki Jiki, upon entering the battlefield we can remove a shield counter, make a 1-1 one, one draw card, and then since the Warden has haste it can attack right away, remove another shield counter from itself, make another 1-1 one, one and draw card while dealing 5 damage, so Warden is awesome with a Reflection. And then the other reason to play a bit of red, besides our kicker and reflection, is four copies of Flame Blast Bolt, which is a great one mana removal spell dealing two damage and also exiling a creature or planeswalker in the process, so it can get rid of recursive threats like Tenacious Underdog, for instance. And then in white we also get to play with a wedding announcement, which is an awesome enchantment, making a bunch of 1-1s one and maybe drawing some cards in the process, eventually giving our team a plus one plus one, which is great especially paired with a big life linker like Archangel of Wrath. And then another angel is Sarah Paragon, 4 mana 3 4 flyer, saying once during each of our turns we may play a land from our graveyard or cast a permanent spell with mana value 3 or less, and then if that permanent would be put into our graveyard it gets exiled instead. So Paragon can give a second lease on life to our various enchantments like Fable of the Mirror Breaker, Wedding Announcement, Getting Back Overseer is great, and we're also playing a 4 copies of Jada, Font of Hope, a 2 mana 2-2 two -two legendary angel with flying and vigilance that can also tap for white mana that we can only spend to cast an angel spell, which is of course great in a deck filled with angels, especially with cards like Archangel of Wrath, which can be quite mana hungry if we want to cast it with a full kicker. And then when each other angel we control enters a battlefield, it enters with an additional plus one plus one counter on it for each angel we already control, which can also very quickly get out of hand, and those plus one counters, as we said, also scale very nicely with our big life-linking angels. When we draw cards with Overseer, we're also more likely to string together a few more angels, same goes with Sanctuary Warden, so Janna's great in this deck. And then our final angel is Lisa, Forgotten Archangel, a 5 mana 4-5 legendary angel with flying at lifelink, so yet another lifelink creature to benefit from all those plus one counters. And then whenever another non-token creature we control dies, return that card to its owner's hand at the beginning of the next end step, and if a creature an opponent controls would die, exile it instead. So it gives us more exile effects for the opponent's creatures, while giving us more built-in recursion to go with Sarah Paragon, and all the extra card advantage our deck can already generate. And then our final card is Infernal Grasp, which can destroy any creature at the cost of 2 life, but we can easily make up for the life loss thanks to the life gain from Archangel and Lisa, and having a clean solution for cards like Shieldred is quite important. And then our mana base also has a few of these fetch lands, Cabaretti Courtyard can get Plains or Mountain, and Hideout can get Plains or Swamp, and these are mainly here so we can get them back from the graveyard using Sarah Paragon to immediately gain 3 life as well, 2 from Paragon, 1 from the land itself, so we have enough basics to search up, 2 mountains and 2 swamps, and then our primary color is white, so 5 planes, and then we're also playing 1 channel land with Iganjo, which can also be used as removal. Sadly, Mardu colors don't get a tri-land, 
so it does have worse mana than some of the other three color decks in the format but we still have a few pain lands here with caves and sulfur springs to round out the mana base as well as for sanctum and for sundown pass since once again white is our primary color now we could also try and include some non-angel creatures like blood tithe harvester because it has great synergy with reflection of kiki jiki and we can also get it back out of the graveyard with sarah paragon the problem with harvester is that it's black red on turn two in a deck that needs a lot of white mana so it's pretty tricky to get that going so i decided against it but could be worth experimenting with i suppose so yeah that's our deck now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does okay we're on the play and our hand has potential wanna fetch up a mountain first and then probably a plains second so we can bolt on two overseer on three which hopefully draws us into more lands to play our other angels Let's see what our opponent is up to. Red, white. Okay, stick to the plan. Fetch a planes since we'll need double white. And then now I could also decide to play a fable first instead of overseer. We really just want to keep hitting our land drops. We've got one covered for next turn, but fable's a type of card that can snowball if it doesn't get answered. If we get to make extra mana with our shaman. So the sooner we play it, probably the better. Opponent also, Mardu Colors. Could have a pretty efficient turn thanks to Flame Blast Bolt next turn alongside Overseer with our treasure. Opponent's got their own Fable. Okay, so what do we discard? Maybe one Overseer can go. And then this turn... I could bolt their token, play my own Overseer plus a tap land. That could be okay, and then we still have Archangel to maybe deal with the Reflection later. Okay, found another Archangel. So yeah, this seems fine. And then I'm gonna play this to draw before fetching, since I actually wouldn't mind drawing a land. So this way we have a slightly higher chance. And another courtyard cannot get a swamp, in which case probably another plains, so we don't have to take damage of caves as much. And then reflections, awesome with our overseer, and great with sanctuary warden as well. And announcement could draw a card right away. Opponent's got a Sarah Paragon, which does have a wedding announcement to potentially get back from the graveyard. We did not draw a land, but if I attack with my Shaman into their Paragon, I can finish it off with an Archangel. So that seems like a fine compromise. And if they don't block, we can maybe play Jada plus announcement. But maybe playing around another Flame Blast Bolt. So. Next turn I could play a fully kicked Archangel to kill Paragon. And that could work if we play Jada and Announcements, even if we don't draw land assuming Jada survives. Alright, drew another Announcement. Definitely wouldn't mind hitting my land drop, but the Shaman could make a mana and then Jada gets us to 6 for... Archangel with double kicker. Although we might have to take a turn off killing their reflection first. Opponent's got a cut down to answer ours. Opponent's got a harvester. A great card alongside reflection. We didn't include harvester because our deck is base white, so playing a red black two drop is kind of difficult. Alright, so we don't have the mana to play Archangel fully kicked before attacking. So we might want to attack with our Shaman token. And then if they block with Paragon, we can take it out. Or we can just kill Reflection of Kiki Jiki right now and call it a day. I think we send Overseer and Shaman token. That way we also get to draw off Wedding Announcements to keep hitting our land drops. And then we'll see how they block. Opponent does block with Paragon. 
Okay, perfect. So now we can play Archangel with Double Kicker. And then take out both creatures. Two to the Paragon, two to the Reflection. Since we can split it up here. And we even get a counter from Jada. So that worked out beautifully. Get to draw a card end of turn. And there's our land. So maybe next turn we can play Sanctuary Warden. Lisa's also looking pretty strong in case of a sweeper effect. Opponent's got her own Lisa. And they're gonna take out Jada while returning Harvesters, so pretty nice value play. So I could attack with both creatures. So we can finish off Lisa with another Archangel. And if they take it, I can play Sanctuary Warden. That seems fine. Right, opponent bites, blocks our shaman. And these archangels have been pretty great. We're up to 36 in the meantime, draw off announcements, which is now festivity. So at 5 and 6 toughness, it's going to be pretty hard for something like a meat hook massacre to kill both creatures. And we've got lots more action in hand. Okay, Liliana's not bad. Deals with this one Archangel. Home, and I don't appreciate it when people touch my things. One of your friends has to leave. That's a drawback of drawing cards with announcement as opposed to having a few 1-1s laying around. Okay. So, finish off Liliana. Or we can go face, and then Sanctuary Warden can make a token. It's a bit risky, since then they could start taking out several creatures. So the safer line is to just finish off Liliana, and then I'm kind of liking just Sanctuary Warden, make a 1-1. One -one. also double spell announcement plus fable Fine. I'll take my but uh we'll get the angel going and then we could either remove a plus one counter or a shield counter given that the most likely way for a warden to die is another blood token and then harvester killing it which kind of ignores the shield counters or potentially another edict effect i don't think we really mind getting rid of one shield counter And now Archangel can also just finish off our opponents if we get to connect with our two flyers. But our opponents can, of course, still present some interaction. If they're looking at the blood tokens to maybe sacrifice, that's a good sign. It means they don't have anything exciting in hand. Opponent passes. And yeah, we'll just move to combat. They might have a Wandering Emperor to exile one of my attackers. Um, in which case, I still get to draw a card of Sanctuary Warden. And we can play Wedding Announcement to draw. Or we can play an Archangel to finish off Wandering Emperor. Playing Lisa doesn't help since Wandering Emperor exiles. So yeah, we'll just go for it here. Can send in the token as well if we'd like. And they could respond to the trigger to force us to remove a plus one counter instead of a shield counter. Given that Wandering Emperor is so likely, I think we remove shield counter instead of plus one counter. Although there's a small chance they have something like Infernal Grasp, in which case they could kill Warden. Nah, I think they have a Wandering Emperor here. And yep, there it is. Goes for Sanctuary Warden anyways. So good call on the shield counter. You are not much of a roadblock. 
And we'll see if they want to give up on the harvester. They do. Not going to use High Gunjo. Damage is fine. And then... If I play Archangel with Kicker, I don't have enough mana for anything else. Don't think we care about Wandering Emperor sticking around for a turn too much. So announcement to draw. And Fable seems fine. And I'll play one more land out. Bonan discarding a Bank Buster. They don't have time for that. And another announcement in hand. Can discard Mountain to our second chapter. Maybe I Gunjo as well. I won't let a now an Elspeth. It's going to go digging with a minus I three, hoping to find something exciting. Wandering Emperor can make a Samurai token. But yeah, these copies of Wedding Announcements are making it so our creatures are just overpowering the 2 2 Samurai. And all these random tokens also good against Liliana. So we should have lethal here with another Archangel. Since we can get rid of the Samurai plus deal two to our opponents. Yeah, Archangel has been our MVP this game for sure. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a fine hand. No immediate interaction, but a Jada into announcements. Now an Infernal Grasp. Up against Mono Black Aggro, it looks like. So the life gain of Archangel is going to be pretty important. So if we play Jad on turn 2, it doesn't line up great against an opposing Liliana of the Veil. But I also don't want Infernal Grasp, a Conscript need to keep this for something like Shieldred if that shows up. Or maybe a Graveyard Trespasser. So probably still going to play Jad on turn 2. Opponent does not have a 2 mana creature. So they probably just have spot removal for Jada here. So that's okay. Cut down takes care of our angel. And let's see if they can add to the pressure here. Yep, Trespasser exiles Jada. So a nice start from our opponent. I think I still go for Wedding Announcement as opposed to Infernal Grasp on Trespasser. Although it's actually a close call. It's mostly in case your opponent has Shieldred. I would rather have Infernal Grasp to answer Shieldred. But if our opponent's next play is like a Liliana of the Veil, then getting rid of the creature that's actually killing us is not a bad idea. And I put a stop on upkeep in case of uh, Shieldred here so we can Infernal Grasp before our draw step. Opponent had a Liliana instead. At least sacking a token doesn't feel too bad. And then now the plan's probably Infernal Grasp, Trespasser. And wait on Archangel until we can play it kicked to take care of Liliana. So play a land. Make it a swamp so we don't have to take damage of caves. Make 1-1 one, one, and probably should have kept it daytime. In case I have another Trespasser here. Just wanted to give the opponent less information to work with. Drop it. So a Graveyard Glutton down. And next turn Archangel will clear Liliana. And we'll take two of Conscripts. Right. Opponents holding on to whatever they have in hand here, which could be another Liliana. Could just be a removal spell. So do we bother attacking Liliana with a 1-1? Maybe the opponent ends up using removal. But the drawback is our opponents having removal for Archangel instead. And then 
getting to connect with a conscript once again, although I guess we would make another 1-1 end of turn. So maybe we can bait out removal here by attacking Liliana. Alright, never mind. Could also kill conscript instead of uh, Liliana. But I don't want my opponent plussing Liliana, so I think this is still the play. Uh, and they were hanging on to Infernal Grasp. So it could have paid off if her opponent valued Whatever. Liliana's loyalty a bit more. But uh, that's okay. Concealing Curtains is going to have a look here. And it's probably going to take away Fable. But we drew an even better one in Sarah Paragon. And I'll take the trade here. Flame Blast Bolt means we can finish off Revealing Eye. Sarah Paragon can get back a land right away. And I probably should keep my token back so we can double block Revealing Eye. Bolt also clean answer to potential underdog or the cold conscript. Biggest problem here would be shield roots starting to drain us. Revealing eye attacks. So a small chance they have a meat hook massacre. Although more likely is a Liliana of the Veil, and they just want to kill the token so that Liliana can finish off Paragon. I don't think that our deck is likely to have a Meat Hook Massacre, which would otherwise also potentially deal with Paragon if we block. So I guess it means we take three. And then try and pull ahead with Paragon. Could see Liliana plus. Nope, Invoke Despair instead. Okay. Was not expecting that one, but I guess same argument as Liliana making a sacrifice. So now we can keep Paragon. Which can also replay... Wedding announcement, but we are at three, so wouldn't mind some life gain. Okay, there's some life gain. So I could play Overseer, see what we draw, and then most likely play Wedding Announcements as well. Another Bolt, so we could double Bolt, and then just play Mountain for now, and stay at four. Yeah, that seems okay. And then next turn play Wedding Announcement, which can maybe draw right away. And then I guess if I cast Bolt now, we can uh, make it so it switches back to daytime. Okay, so we're at four. And hopefully our opponent draws a land here. Okay, another Overseer is nice. So we can start there. At 5 life, we feel a bit safer in case of more copies of Invoke Despair. So both can attack, play announcements. And I'm wondering if I should keep a land in hand in case of uh, Liliana making us discard. Sure. Since we'll draw end of turn of announcement, so we could draw a more relevant spell. Reason to play land, I guess, if we could cast Infernal Grasp if we drew it, to maybe take out a shield root before it can uh, damage us in our draw step. Another Revealing Eye instead. Takes Overseer. Well, we're in pretty good shape now. Can play Overseer out of the graveyard with our Sarah Paragon. Gain some more life. So the revealing eye didn't really accomplish much, and our opponent concedes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand's a little bit on the expensive side here, with uh, two 5-drops and a 4-drop. So this might be a mulligan. Although then again, we do have a Flame Blast Bolt as early interaction. 
And then at least sounds not a bad way to stabilize. I'll try it. Really hoping for one of our three mana enchantments. Turn to Jada would also be a welcome sight. So for now, keep up Flame Blast Bolt. Opponent Red Green and a Phoenix Chick. Seems like a fine target for Bolts. Even though they could have more threatening two drops, we might want to exile instead. And we do have flyers to block the Phoenix Chick eventually. Yeah, you know what? We'll wait. Infernal Grasp's pretty good too here. It is going to cost us some life. We're also taking damage of our Sulphur Springs. Right, another Phoenix Chick. Okay, that makes the decision on Bolts a bit easier. And then we can grasp their next play. And then the life-gaining Elisa is going to be a pretty big deal. Three mana for a Stormseeker. Yeah, that's definitely worth killing. And then Bolt's probably getting rid of Pack Leader now too. So we drop to 13 once everything is said and done. Our land is good. Just a 3-4 at the moment, not getting anything back right away. But it is a blocker. Opponent could play partners, yep, so they haven't missed a beat. And yeah, partners is the type of card we kind of need to answer as soon as possible. Currently lacking the means to. But uh, Lisa will at least buy us a bit more time. And we'll keep Paragon back on defense. Ooh, Ashivan Devastator for four. Well, we have a second Lisa, so we're happy to double block here. Opponent hangs back instead. And Jada's not bad. So yeah, we're not getting anything back here. So we'll just play Jada, which will make our next Lisa even better. Although now Devastator could grow up to an 8-8, so it won't be able to just double block. We'll have to put Jada in front of it as well. And a Raichu. Is it time for an all-out attack? They've got a lot of damage on the board. Okay. Well, there's not a whole lot going on here for us. I guess what we could do is play a Lisa just to give it some counters. And then get the other Lisa back end of turn. I hope that's how it works. And... Um, yeah, that's probably my turn. If I try and attack first, what happens? Then I maybe gain for life. They can just block with Devastator, but then we don't get our Lisa back. So I think we just play another Lisa. And then might as well play my land here. Archangel would be one of our better draws as it can kill partners while giving us a big lifelinker. But now a 7 8 a life-linking Lisa is pretty decent. Devastator 8 8. And another Kumano. Just a land the draw. So playing a Lisa here doesn't accomplish anything. I can attack with Jada. If they block, we replay Jada, and I guess that's fine. Don't think I want to attack with Paragon. Since then we wouldn't have a blocker for a brief period. Devastator 1010. Still happy to double block. And our opponent sends it. Okay. So Lisa down, 
but we've got another one and Overseer now too. And we can play both if we tap Jada. So yeah, that works. Now Jada cannot attack into partners, which has reach. But that's okay. I guess we could send Paragon, but I wouldn't mind an extra blocker here. As our opponent's gonna make some etchings. Which could also potentially counteract Lisa's ability by exiling our creatures. So now a 7-7 Phoenix Chick still cannot block. So not the biggest problem. And we're just hoping to draw an Infernal Grasp for partners. And then we should be able to take over pretty easily. Okay, Courtyard can start providing a bit of value with Paragon to thin out the deck. And do we have any attacks now? I guess Lisa, Overseer, Paragon can all attack. And I guess even Jada, since if they block with partners, we just get it back with Paragon. And our opponent takes it since they don't want to chump with the partners, which is another way to get rid of it. Awesome. So yeah, we leveled up, had some early interaction, and then even though partners stuck around, our synergies with Lisa and Jada were able to stabilize us. So yeah, we got to see our Mardu Angels deck in action, and yeah, it seems like a pretty powerful mid-range deck, giving you that early interaction that you need to withstand aggro decks, and then the late game card advantage from Fable of the Mirror Breaker, as well as Wedding Announcement, paired with some awesome angels, and the Archangel definitely impressed. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.